Hi everyone, welcome to week nine of the journey. And this week nine could be a journey by itself really, because this week is about backbends. So this is a short introduction to backbends and we're gonna go through three different poses, wild sink, then bridge pose, and then finally wheel pose for those of you who have enough flexibility in the back. So I'll guide you through it, be safe and be patient as well. If you can't reach all of the poses, it's fine and it will come with time. And just another note and back bends. Back bends are very useful, not just because they make you do nice and fun yoga poses, but also because it helps you correct the posture of your back. It strengthens all of the muscles in your back. If you do it properly as well, you always you know, engage your core so it strengthens all of the muscles that are around your spine and it counter counterbalances you know, the posture that we often have when we're sitting or when we're working it kind of realigns our entire spine. So working on back bends will probably help you with a lot of your back pains. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and remember to like, comment and share this video to all of your friends so I can keep making some. And if you need any help finding your own yoga, go to yogajourneywithsophie.com and book a class with me. Have fun. Your yoga journey, get that Universal love we all need Reconnect your body and mind And enjoy yourself At the same time be grateful And grow on your yoga journey So what poses are we going to see this week? The first pose is called Wild Thing. It is such a strange name, I know. Uh, in Sanskrit, the name is actually Kat Mekhamat Karasana, which means the ecstatic unfolding of the enraptured heart. Even though this pose is often taught in beginners' classes, I think it's quite a complex pose, as so much is happening. It is a balancing pose with one arm off the floor combined with the back bend. But don't worry about it. As usual, we'll see every step of how to get into this pose. The second pose is called Bridge Pose and also Setu Bandhasana. It is a very good introduction to backbends as it allows to gradually raise the hips and there is no risk to lose balance and it's a very easy pose to come out of. The third pose is called Wheel Pose or also Urva Danurasana. And this is personally one of my favorite poses that I have been doing since I was five years old, long before I discovered yoga. It is quite a challenging pose and it requires flexibility in the back, in the shoulders, and also in the psoas, those unconscious muscles under your abdominals. So when flexed, psoas make you fold forward. Here we are doing the opposite. We are lengthening the psoas while keeping the core engaged to protect your lower back. Now take it easy, take your time, and practice this as many times as you need and watch your progress over the next months, not days, months. Good luck. So this week we're going to start with wild thing. So for wild thing, we actually start in downward dog. So come into downward dog. Take a breath here. And then on your inhale, you're going to raise your right leg to the ceiling. And then you're going to bend that right leg to the back. You should feel your hip opening to the side. So if you lifted your right leg, you're going to feel your hips opening to the right side. If you lifted your left leg, you're going to feel your hips open on the left side. And take a breath here. Find comfort in the pose and make sure that you have this pose with your shoulders square to the front of the mat. So if you look up, your weight is equally distributed across the left and right shoulder while the hip is still open to the side. 
And then to finish wild thing, we're going to inhale, move slightly more up towards the arms, maybe until the shoulder reaches the top of the elbow. And then drop your foot, back foot to the side, flatten the original foot. Make sure you have one leg that is straight and the other one is bent and supporting most of your weight. And the rest of your weight is supported by this arm. So it's easier if your shoulder's on top of your elbow. If you haven't gone that far and you're a little bit more diagonally placed, it's still okay as long as you feel strong enough and comfortable. And then extend your right arm to the back of the room and stare at the back and make sure that your left arm is strong. Use the muscles that are below your armpits to stabilize that pose. And then to come out of this pose, you bring the right arm back to where it was, you pivot, and then you're going to raise the right leg back up and then coming back to downward dog. Now we're going to do the same on the other side, just so that you can see better. I'm going to turn around, so inhale. Step to the middle of the mat and stand up. Turn around. Same thing here. Let's go down in, down the dog. And take a few breaths here. And without changing the way the weight is distributed across your body, except from your legs, lift the left leg up and open it to the back of the room. So now your hips are open to the left side. Make sure your weight is still in both of your shoulders. And take a few breaths here. You should feel a stretch at the back of your hamstrings and in a one opening of the hips. And then as you inhale, you're gonna slightly look up, move slightly up and then drop your back foot, flatten your right foot and extend your left arm to the back of the room. Now with time, slowly as you this is a back bend and slowly when you become more flexible, this hand is progressively going to come down to the floor and you can even move into wheel pose. But for now, I just told you this has an information, for now you can just stay here. And make sure that your core is always engaged. In all of the back bends, the core should be engaged in order to protect the lower back. And I know it's hard sometimes to breathe with your core engaged, but this is something you should practice on. And then come out of the pose, bring your left hand back down, and then your left foot back up, and down into downward dog. And take a few breaths here. And now we're going to work on the two other back bends. So step to the front of the mat, Whew. stand back up, and then come and sit onto the mat. So for Setu Bandasana, or bridge pose, we're gonna come and lie on our mats. Come on the side, keep your knees bent, and slowly come and lie onto your mats. All right, and then place your feet, hips distance apart and underneath your knees. So this is important. They shouldn't be too close to wide and they shouldn't be too far away from your body. It's good if they are 
I wouldn't say it may as close as possible, but just, you know, as close as you feel comfortable with at first. If you can touch your feet, your heels, that's perfect. And then keep your legs straight, pointing towards the ceiling. Do not let them drop to the middle or to the side. And then you're going to place your hands flat on the side of your body. Your neck is long and check that your spine is long as well. And then on your next inhale, we're going to raise our hips to the ceiling. And stay here for a few breaths as we get to understand this pose. So check that your knees are still pointing towards the ceiling. You can't really look at them. So here it's more of a, what you feel. And then you contract all of the muscles in your legs. Contract your quads to help you go higher. And contract your core to help you be strong here. So this is a back bend that will help you lead to wheel pose. Press hard on your feet. And then if you feel comfortable here, you can also press on your hands if this helps you maintain the hips higher. And if you feel comfortable doing this, you can interlock your fingers underneath your back. And then you can even walk the shoulders closer together in order to allow the upper back to start bending backwards as well. Press hard on your hands to raise your hips higher. You should feel a stretch in your back, obviously, as this is a back bend, but you also should feel a wide opening of your chest and your shoulders. And now we're going to come back down, so release your arms, place them back flat on the floor, and then slowly, vertebra by vertebra, you're going to roll down onto your mat to touch the floor, and the tailbone should be last to touch the floor. So for wheel pose, I would advise you to first watch the video without doing the pose, and then when you think you've understood, you can replay the video and then practice at the same time. So we stay in this bridge position, the bottom part of the body does move, and they're going to bring our hands, the fingers, underneath our shoulders, as close as possible. And then on an inhale, we're going to lift not only our hips, but also our chest, and then we're going to tilt our head looking backwards so that our the crown of our head can touch the mat. So on an inhale, and then place the crown of your head on the mat. This is like a half wheel pose, just as a just to test how you feel here already. So can your elbows kind of move in a comfortable way? Can it be pointing towards the ceiling? Are your hands flat and strong on the floor? Can you try to remove a little bit of the weight that is on your head? Play a little bit here. Is your back comfortable here with a little back bend and with your core engaged to protect the lower back as always? Try and have a little. Now on the exhale, you're gonna tuck your chin inside your chest and then come back down vertebra by vertebra. We're gonna try again, and this one we're gonna go, this time we're gonna go higher. So place your hands underneath your shoulders again. On an inhale, lift. You can place your head if you want first, and then if you're comfortable, you can press on your hands to lift your entire body. And here the objective is to have the arms straight and the legs potentially straight as well. For this will very much depend on the flexibility of your back and your psoas. And the psoas are like the, these deep muscles that are under your abdominals in front. Remember to engage your core to protect your lower back, always. And keep your shoulders far away from your ears. Strong shoulders, strong arms, never overextended. Legs are straight, knees are pointing towards the ceiling. 
And then on exhale, you're gonna tuck your chin into your chest and then slowly come back down. You can pass by the head stage or directly come down onto the floor slowly and then vertebra by vertebra. Come flat on the floor. I'm gonna do this one more time directly without passing by the middle stage. So place your hands underneath your shoulders and on an inhale, you're gonna press to come up. And here, if you wanted to, you could also potentially walk slowly towards your feet or bring your feet closer to your hands. But this is only if your back is flexible enough. Do not force if you start feeling pain, just say where you are. And then walk back out the way you came. And exhale. Take your chin into your chest and come back down. So that's it for bridge and wheel pose. And I hope you liked this week's back introduction to back bending. And don't be discouraged if you're not so flexible from the back. It will come with time, but just remember to always stay safe. Bye bye. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. And remember to like, comment, and share this video with all your friends so I can keep making them. If you need any help finding your own yoga, go to my website and book a class with me. I hope to see you soon.